collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign will come to your timeless uh, path of true love read. I'm your reader, Mark Angela Lyons Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angela Lyons. But you can call me Mal and dealing with the humidity today. I have sensual air, but you wouldn't be able to hear me if I had it on right now. So taking lovely AC breaks here in beautiful Holbrook, Long Island, uh, before we dive into the reading, because uh, we're going to get down to it. But I recorded two videos to save time on the intros here. One is a preface to these timeless true love reads, explaining what the path of true love is, uh, actually the spread that I'm, I'm about to do for you all. And I do suggest you check that out, because uh, you might not be familiar with some of the newer definitions coming down from the higher whatevers. Uh, that being said, I also did a one explaining uh, how to book me for a reading and what actually goes on before, during, and after a reading. So uh, if you want to check that out as well, that just saves so much time. Let's get down to business. We are doing a Celtic cross. Uh, we'll use two different decks to do that, Daughters of the Moon to lay down the foundation. Uh, mythic Tarot to clarify. You'll see when we get there, unless you've been watching uh, my work for a while, subscribing to the channel, whatever. Uh, but we're going to start with two Caroline Mace archetype decks to get the dominant eighth chakra energy, vibration, story, archetype, what have you, on the path of true love for you. You will be the first position down in the Celtic cross. The second will be somebody crossing your path does not have to be romantic sexual, but often is, because that's what people are looking for. And Lord knows, Lady knows, the gods and the archangels are well aware of that, right? They hear all the prayers, even the ones that you don't speak out loud. So uh, then we will get uh, two, uh, well, an oracle card, a whisper of love oracle, message from the higher selves, and a healing mantra from Matt Kahn, heal, Matt Kahn's healing mantra deck. Uh, to help you get through this deal, do as needed. I guess that's about it, except to say all the decks that I read are always in the bottom of the description box, along with other linky poos. There is a, a link there to uh, some uh, workshops that I did on Vimeo. They're on demand, Vimeo on demand, on the path of true love. If you find yourself interested, you know where to find it. Um, otherwise, both feet on the floor. If you can, focus on your breath, if you will. I will do the same to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can from the divine through these pieces of cardboard into the interwebs, into you. And remember, it's a general read. Let's be adults about this. If it's not your read, it's not your read. Check your other signs. Lovely. Done. Please take a nice deep breath. Mmm. As I call upon my beloved collective pantheons of angels. Archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of true love, and the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. Please, I need two Caroline Mace archetype cards here, one to represent the Gemini in the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign as the hero of the hero's journey that is the path of true love for them, and whoever is crossing them on that path, regardless of the form of relationship the lesson being presented to them, the challenge, etc., for weal or woe, for, to help or harm, so that healing can happen uh, in this timeless read. So what do we got for the Gemini? And what do we got for the one crossing their path? Now, this could flip-flop back and forth, right? Only you can know that. And, and uh, I don't know what these are yet. You do. They are in the title. So let's see how brave you are. Let's see. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, at least you're presenting as the student with a wisdom family archetype, but you're crossed with the martyr. Now, here's the T. I have to say this every time. Archetypes themselves are neutral. They're patterns. You are not your archetypes. They are pieces of your soul contract, right, with yourself, your sacred contract, Sacred Contracts by Carolyn Mace, one of the best books I've ever read, uh, read uh, and, and influenced my life greatly. So they're all neutral, right? They're all a scale of lead to gold, shadow to light, pain to peace, toxic to healthy, however you want to do that, fear to love, if you want a Course in Miracles it. Uh, so we, we've got a wisdom family archetype here and a divine family archetype. So as wonderful as the student sounds, as toxic as the shadow is, and vice versa, as toxic as the shadow is in the martyr 
uh, as magnificent and transcendent is the light. And I think this is really good examples of that. So you're dealing with the student archetype uh, in the shadow, uh, arrogance in the pursuit of destructive knowledge. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, unwillingness to translate knowledge into action, like you learn something but you don't do anything with it. And I'm gonna say, Gemini's, <laughs> if we're gonna, if we're gonna talk zodiacal light and shadow, that is like you guys can really have some genius ideas, brilliant insights. So I put it all together and then not act on it. Be like, ooh, what's that over there? Right? Just saying. Dated a ton of you. Uh, not anymore. Uh, the light attributes. You, Mama Virgo, I, we're ruled by the same planet. I get it. Uh, the light attribute, though, and I love this. Human Humility and devotion to knowledge, openness to lifelong learning, and the very first grace I talk about in my book, Words of Grace, I-99 on Kindle, links in the description box, is the grace of humility. May I grant me the maiden grace of humility to know that I do not know, but I am willing to be shown the truth, right? Accepting that I might have some thoughts that might not be based in total, you know, truth, immutable truth. They might seem true, right? So I can have the humility, uh, because we're never rewarded for not knowing. Right? And yet you can't know what you're not ready to know yet. But to have what you need to know shown to you with every breath, that's a different story. And that is definitely an openness to lifelong learning. I don't have the student archetype. <laughs> I'm an autodidact. I'm a teacher. I am self-taught, mostly. Uh, and every teacher I ever worked with intimately, it never went well, which is pretty much a damn good sign you're an autodidact. Uh, the shadow attribute of the martyr, addiction to self-pity, we all go there. Uh, and you can have an archetype of reason, a season, or a lifetime. Like, it literally can visit your energy field, your eighth chakra, for a day, affect everything else underneath it, and move on. can be with you a season, but a season isn't just three months. It could be a decade in terms of the larger lifetime, reason, season, or lifetime. So addiction to self-pity. You are dealing with somebody with the martyr archetype, but keep in mind all the great masters in spiritual, religious, whatever you want to call it, usually went through a martyr phase. <laughs> Several come to mind. I'm not going to because I'm not getting into a comparative religion discussion right here, right now, although I honestly could. The light attribute, learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause, transcendent, right? So that's why it's a divine family archetype. You might very, very much have a relationship here with somebody. If they are in that light side, might be someone of very, very high spiritual vibration, but one who has sacrificed a great deal, right, to do that, right? Uh, learning the transcendent nature of service, but uh, I mean, I'm a Virgo, that's what we do. Um, and I've had the martyr come and go for reasons. It never really stays uh, because I know when I go into self-pity that that's a voice in me that needs to be heard and loved and healed because it's not based in truth, right? So powerful uh, relational dynamic here. Let's get into it. Daughters of the Moon Tarot will, if you think of that eighth chakra with these two patterns, right? These two people. Uh, you're, if they cross your path and essentially you cross theirs uh, then the next these cards will be how that energy affects right the crown the third eye the throat and the heart it's how I read just how I read most of the time with this deck please breathe as I call upon my goddesses of air and the sign of Gemini please we're gonna do a 10 card Celtic cross here we'll do them face down and then turn them over one at a time for this Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, Path of True Love, Timeless Path of True Love read for the ones watching this, cross watchers and all that. So we start with the student. What's going on there? Heart, throat, third eye crown. Excuse me, cat hair on the face, occupational hazard with three black cats in the house. Uh, uh, the martyr crossing their path out. You have to be careful because it's like it's not there the martyr, is that they are under the martyr archetype in some way, shape, and form, just like you are in the student. Remember, this can flip flop. Well, what's going on there? Heart, throat, third eye crown. Please leave that card in my hand. Just one. Nope, that's two. I can tell. It's a Gemini. It's a Gemini rain, so please leave that card in my hand. Heart, throat, third eye crown for the one crossing their path, or at least how their energy feels, right? If that's not what they're feeling, it's definitely how their energy is feeling to you, perhaps. Uh, what's going on? Third position here, the core, what they may not be aware of, affecting both of them, the foundation of it, uh, what's behind them. 
uh, let's say, behind the Gemini on the path of true love, because path of true love is about you. This is just a character walking onto the stage. Uh, what crowns this sort of orbiting may touch down, may manifest, may not, uh, depending on the free will of all involved. Nope, 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 nope. What's going on there? There we go. Uh, what is uh, before them on the path, right? Let's say that that crowning card manifests what comes from that most probable, what lay before them on the path of true love. What is the lesson, right? What is the lesson the gods would have them learn about true love like true love conquers all <laughs> true love conquers all learning to be loved to love and to be loved on the path of a true love what is their lesson in all of this what's their vibe from the outside looking in horizontal talking about their heart th third eye crown an empath would pick up on it lickety split uh, what is the destiny hewn from fate, the hope from their fears, the alchemy they face on the hero's journey, aspect of the path of true love, heroes are handed fate, and if they take the journey, uh, they manifest their destiny, led to gold. What is the most probable outcome here? this uh, timeline of this lifetime. All right, here we go. Student. You've got the student archetype with the Sagittarius card. This is uh, the Crone of Blades, Kara Widwin, Celtic uh, goddess crone in this case, uh, uh, would correlate to the Sagittarius card. It is the Sagittarius card literally written on the deck there, uh, on the card. So this would be your Knight of Wands. So there is a hunger and a thirst there. For knowledge, right? So that thing of expansion, right? You may have planets in in uh, in Sagittarius. It's a moot point when it's hard thir third eye crown. Yes, maybe you're influenced by somebody who's Sagittarian in this deal, but certainly then what the effect or how you're resonating with this person, if that is the case, has to do with expansion, right? It's spirituality, really. If you look at the highest notes of Sagittarian energy, it is that freedom, it is that mutable fire, that Jupiterian expansion when it hits fire. That's why mutable fire, right? You blow on a fire, it will uh, keep growing. Uh, and might go out of control, which, let's face it, Sagittarian energy can be that. But it is that wanting to experience the larger thoughts in life, uh, the larger desires in life, travel, that kind of thing. And with the student there, I can see that translated into really wanting to know truth. Uh, probably spiritual, but only you know you. Uh, the martyr crossing your path as the hermit. Uh, the wise one. There's a maiden, a mother, and a crone in this deck. This is the crone. The Kaliach. Hi, Kaliach. Uh, riding a pale, well, a gray horse uh, over a stone circle carrying a, a, a wand, but with a crystal tip that is shining. So there is our light element, transcendent, right? And I think with this martyr thing, we've got the deeper in and higher up, this person's doing their work, uh, learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause. And remember, those can be the same thing in terms of holographic healing, right? You heal you, there is that ripple effect, although now we're kind of getting, it's not a ripple effect, it's happening instantaneously because that's how the quantum works. Uh, and you shift timelines with the blink of an eye now, you don't even realize, right? So uh, a student and a martyr with that saggy expansion on the inside, this could certainly be a spiritual teacher, but somebody certainly who, at least in their own energy, is boundary. Yes, it's a Virgo card, does not have to be a Virgo. Um, but that doesn't mean that that self-pity part isn't in there, that there's not a little self-pity part, or maybe not so little, right? We'll find out what's at the core. Well, strength. Strength, which you don't see, or what's at the core of the matter here, is about courage, is about the opening of the heart, following of the heart, and facing fear, right? What do you need courage for, right? If it's just you, the remote, and Netflix for the night, unless you watch, you know. But even that, that maybe it does take courage to watch some of that stuff. I hear Fear, fear Street on Netflix is absolutely terrifying and not for kids, but whatever. Uh, these kids today and their blood and gore, uh, you're all gonna die. <laughs> scary fucking movie right so what is this courage at the core here well 
giving myself moon is in Pisces right now. I'm a Pisces moon, so I've been feeling stuff uh, all day intuitively. This does really feel like a focusing on the heart, right? Really going inside on both, uh, uh, I hear, I hear it, both kind of going within uh, the student more in terms of wanting to know and understand what their true heart's desires are and its true desires, right? Your true heart's desires, your spiritual heart's desires is what pulls you forward on the path to true love. So the more you're aware of that, and I feel like very, very similar for uh, this martyr, but I would say in terms of communication between these two, not so much, although the mythic tarot will show what's going on in the outer, but usually with the hermit, even in heart, third, third eye crown, and what am I doing? They're already on the table getting to that higher place. Uh, behind you, criticism. Now, this is the Nine of Blades, which would be the Nine of Swords, and certainly we're familiar with the image of the Nine of Swords in the Pamela Coleman Rider Waite deck. <laughs> All right. Swords, swords, swords. Uh, but I believe if you look at the bedspread, you will see all the signs of the zodiac. If I've got the right card, I think I might. Uh, uh, so criticism hmm, is a tricky word. Like think critical carry in it, right? Or critical math or critical writing. It's very, very precise, very, very specific. And why that keeps us up at night is because the mind is over thinking, and this is a read for Gemini. So there might have been a lot of incisive thinking, like getting to the core, and if it's what got them into their heart here to find this courage within, this expansion with the Sagittarian mutable fire element, then certainly this is a good card. However, <laughs> however, we know for sure now, I'll speak for myself, I know for sure now that when my mind goes into overthinking mode, particularly at 3 a.m., it's because my heart is not open. And this speaks directly to this. There's an imbalance of the head and the heart, and the throat chakra has to moderate the two, right? Has to uh, uh, balance them through the choices it makes, even moment by moment by moment by moment. That's why prayer, meditation, all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you are on a knowledge binge here, taking stuff in, openness to lifelong learning, humility and devotion to it, then get that as much as you take in up here. What does it do down here? That's just how it is, right? That's how I know truth. When my heart, when I read something or, or hear something, it just goes, <laughs> like that. It's, a, it's like, okay, I'm a Pisces moon. What do you want? What's crowning here? The learner. Good old-fashioned Eight of Pentacles, a crone weaver, a blanket weaver, teaching a maiden uh, her craft, and she's even got one in the background here to show that she has been through this. So there is work and learning here at play, and considering you've got a devotion to knowledge and openness to lifelong learning, with the learner here, this is not just theoretical. If this should ground itself, it's really putting it to work, bringing it into physical form. And I would say the opposite of an unwillingness to translate knowledge into action. Something is going to be brought into action here. Um, obviously, that is a choice you get to make, right? That's why it hovers up here. Will you choose it for it to come down? I feel like as long as you have that openness to seeing, all right, let's just learn, right? Learning curve for everything. Oh, well, because look, two weavers, geez. You've got here the, the weaving uh, uh, crone there, teaching, learning. Here you have the life weaver, the spider woman, the wheel of fortune that there is something in that, well, it's all part of the divine plan, right? It's all written into the cosmic variations, near infinite number of them, if not infinite. Um, so this is really something turning within, or at least a realization that there is a soul contract in play here. Now again, is there anything here screaming to me, uh, romantic sexual? Not yet. But I will say, there is, of course, soul contract involved here. We have soul contracts with everyone in our lives. Uh, classifications therein is a different conversation. There are links in the description box for some of them. Twin flame and soulmate, at least. Uh, but if this is a true love relationship, uh, not just somebody who um, might be preparing you for a true love relationship, then definitely the thing that this is inescapable. 
what comes next is inescapable. It is written. But what you do while you are in it is up to you. You still have free will and choice. Will you follow your heart? Will you be courageous? Will you move forward? Will you take what you've learned and put it into action? This says it's going to stir you on the inside to do that. You'll know it in your creative intuition. Heart, throat, third eye, crown dynamic. What's your lesson? Woo, Scorpio. Now, if there's a Scorpio involved here, if this martyr here with the the with the hermit, you know, Scorpios don't always let on what they're feeling, what they're thinking there, uh, then certainly it could represent that person, even regardless of their sign. But this is Hakate, the crown of the crossroads, right? Uh, this is shadow work. This is transformation. This is about feeling your feelings. It, it, it's your lesson. It's your heart, third, third eye crown. Yes, you may be influenced, like I said, with that Sagittarius card there. Uh, you may be influenced by someone of Scorpio dynamic. But this feels like a death and rebirth. You're learning that as you die and are reborn within yourself, what rises is the more authentic you. So the only thing that gets burnt off in the alchemy from lead to gold are three extra atoms that were never the truth of who you were. They are your conditioning, right? Things written into the script of who you incarnated as in this life, right? Ancestral patterning and societal this and that and what happened at school and what happened at home in your uh, relationships from jump. So your lesson may also have to do with uh, eighth house dynamic, right? Money, sex, power, other people's resources, mysticism, hidden emotion, but also deep hidden intuition. And let's just call her what she is. She is the goddess of witches. And if we're talking about a wisdom archetype here, try to put things into practicality, into that eight of pentacles, because it's just time. Time for them to do it coming up. Well, then the transformation, I would say, is underway. Uh, that even would include shadow work. That would include emotional healing work, psychology, heart, th third eye crown. What's your vibe from the outside? Looking in, another court card here. Uh, by the way, this would be Queen of Cups, uh, Crone of Cups here. Uh, this is uh, Libra, the mother of blades, Skadi, Norse uh, gorgeous uh, ice giantess, I guess. Giantess is, I don't know, do we gender giant? I don't know. <laughs> gender giant. <laughs> sounds like a club. Uh, uh, she is the north wind and that Libra dynamic, this would be the uh, king of swords. Then from the outside looking in, as a Gemini, you're definitely presenting mind, 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 mind. But with that Libra Venusian touch there, cardinal thought, cardinal thought, creative thought, creating balance within yourself. So that's your vibe. Very third eye. I don't know how much throat though, like how much are you actually speaking, choosing, doing on that while you are percolating. Now, what I find interesting is the, how close uh, Libra and Scorpio are, and then how close uh, Scorpio and Sagittarius are. So it's like you've got this interesting corner of the zodiacal wheel belt is actually what it is, what Zodiac means. Uh, what's the destiny here? Well, well, well. Manipulation. I won't say the twin to uh, the card of criticism. This is the nine. This is the six. This is about mental balance, but through deliberate manipulation of the mind. Now, that may sound a little mind controlly, but, you know, meditation is a form of that. Affirmations, mantra work, psychology, counseling, journaling, Right? And it feels like with this, if this is the energy that you're sort of putting out, heart, third, third eye crown, and you're a student archetype in this, well, it's then taking what you've learned and, well, not manipulating with, but understand every time you pray for somebody, you're manipulating. Right? If you're dehydrated and you drink some water, you're manipulating. So there is free will in here. Obviously, there is free will in here, but you cannot change the script of what's going around you, only how you want to do this and to do this in a balanced way. Now, I am getting on this that at least the internal manipulation needs some kind of outlet to bring it into balance. And we're going to look at that, whether or not you're communicating with uh, this person, with the martyr archetype, uh, with the hermit, right? The wise one. They might be in seclusion. There might not be that communication there. So 
really, with that Sagittarius thing, I would say certainly look into different uh, psychological as well as spiritual healing modalities. Doesn't mean you have to apply them, all of them, as you go. That could be a bit much. But look into them and really, what, and Carolyn Mace would say, do the one that terrifies you the most, right? <laughs> Whatever one really challenges you the most, do that one. But that's her. And I do. <laughs> and I've done that plenty of times, particularly if shadow work is involved. If you can find the video, the movie, technically, The Shadow Effect by Debbie Ford, it's like the secret, but for shadow work. And I still haven't been able to find it. I'm sure it just... It'll pop up when needed. I used to have the DVD, but I gave it away, and you know that never came back. Uh, your outcome. Now, this has been a little common for these true love readings this time around, ending with fives. Uh, we are looking here at the five of cups, the storm, right? Uh, and storms pass, but the five of cups is definitely emotional upset here, but that could be as a result of you bringing into balance the emotions that you have not faced or dealt with that have biological um, consequences in the body, let alone biochemical, right? When we repress emotions, where do the, um, the chemicals connected to those emotions go? They go into the cell tissue, eh? right? Like unprocessed stress, cortisol. It's going to hold on to everything it can. It's fight or flight, even if it's just over bills, right? So inflammation, right? All that kind of stuff going on here. Now, I'm a healer, uh, but I'm mostly verbal now. Right? It's totally spiritual counseling and readings and bringing through information, however you want to see or say that. But I feel like you could benefit from that, right? You could benefit either going directly to your own, but to understand that the feelings that are going on here, we will see what this looks like on the outer. But with that Five of Cups, it's a passing storm, but it might be clearing the lenses. This release of emotion with inside of you that as a Gemini, not maybe necessarily everyone will know about unless you want them to, right? All right, let's go. Uh, mythic tarot, my gods, breathe. That's a lot, my gods. Uh, well, look, it's not very much a hero's journey without some storms along the way, right? Uh, let me just see. One, two, only three major arcana cards. Let's see as I call upon my gods of air and the sign of Gemini, please, I need 10 cards. This time we will call them out as we go, one at a time, to clarify the path of true love for this Gemini collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, uh, presenting as the student archetype in that cover card, but could go back and forth, could be a cross watcher, that could flip flop. What's going on here? They've got the student in the eighth, Heart, the third eye crown, Sagittarian energy, and the two of wands, a place of indecision. Big shock. <laughs> Big shock for a Gemini. But it is really, and I would say, an indecision, but really looking at your choices and being a little hamstrung, having to make a plan. Uh, this is Jason of Jason and the Argonauts. Two wands, right, outside uh, the cave of Chiron. Uh, the Kentaur, the Centaur. Um... And he's deciding, do I want to take the quest or not? Because I know if I go in that cave, my life is going to change forever. Or I could just keep walking. Think both ways about that. Look both ways. Think both ways. I mean, one of them is definitely more challenging than the other. I could feel that. And that openness to lifelong learning. And if I don't have all the information, then I won't be safe. Well, it's not much of a hero's <laughs> journey without a challenge and the unknown. And Path that True Love is a mystical thing, anyway. It's the higher powers and all that. They don't tell you what you need until you need to know it. That's why these are helpful, but can't take you all the way home. Uh, a reading's helpful, though. Clarity helps. So, with this martyr crossing their path uh, with the hermit, what's that look like? Uh, lower three chakras. Uh, four cups, they're meh. They're like, eh, dissatisfied with this. Dissatisfied with this. Um, maybe have been talked out of whatever this is rather than talked into. Certainly that Four of Cups would parlay into a Five of Cups in the most probable outcome there. So from the outside looking in, affecting the lower three chakras so far, it's like you might know that they have clammed up, that they have shut up, that they are not communicating, and they're dissatisfied with uh, this relationship. It feels like 
I mean, if you don't know who this person is or you haven't met each other, then they're just kind of dissatisfied with all of this stuff in general. And again, is this romantic sexual? I don't know yet. It's starting to lean that way. Lord knows that's what people want on YouTube. So what's going on here at the core of this? I mean, this could be both of them. Finding their courage, right? Facing their fears, the internal strength of the heart. Love is divine power, the grace of healing and the grace of fortitude. True courage. What does this look like from the outside looking in or the inside looking out there? And we've got the hanged man. So, yeah, both of you, I would say, are in a place of surrender. I don't see. Well, I guess I could see how these people might not have met yet. Because if you sort of given up, and I don't usually go for that with the hanged man, but on the outside, you're like, whatever. I am going to surrender my way of looking at things. I, I mean, this is Prometheus bound from Greek myth, a titan. Stole fire. Long story. Longer story, though, <laughs> which I'm not going fully into, obviously, is Odin plucked out his eye, hung upside down on the world tree Ygrassel, and got the runes, as well as other nifty gifties, right? A sacrifice. Seeing things differently. And I feel like with you, with that student archetype there, that could be the most powerful thing you could do, but that takes courage to see things differently. It just does. Um, it's like, there's this great line in A Course in Miracles, I will forgive and see things differently, I will forgive and this will disappear. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, like, <laughs> pick your shell, right? I dream a genie, bewitched, right? Charmed, <laughs> blow it up, a little piper action, I'm a piper, uh, for sure. But it means that the illusion that was never there disappears. You see things differently. You're like, oh my God, totally had misinformation going on here, right? And that might be both sides here. Uh, certainly disillusionment is not something we run towards, but if we're under an illusion, nothing like a hangman, hang out. Let me see what's really going on here, but that do take courage. Well, and maybe that's what this nine of blades behind you is really pointing at, that there's been a lot of looking at thought and thinking about thoughts, right? First thoughts, second thoughts. If you're lucky enough to have third thoughts, uh, Terry Pratchett reference there, I guess I got all three, three levels of power. Then there's been some overthinking here, but some criticism, right? Really the, the fine details, right? Like tweezing out hairs, right? Instead of just <gasps> kind of going in. And certainly there could be some, well, I'm bringing that nine to a six here in your destiny, bringing that into balance feels good. So what does this look like on the outer, please? Yeah, the magician, like you're not so sure how to apply your power here in the past, but you apply it. You definitely apply the the sword aspect of the mind here. And critically, like, yes, it's about incarnation. The card of the magician is truly the first card of the major arcana. The fool being zero, it's in between the last and the first. That null space that jumps into the magician. This is about bringing something, if you want to look at it, right, this is Hermes, god of Gemini for me, the messenger, from the eighth chakra down into physical earth. That's, that's what this is. But with that internal focus to the point of being critical, it could obviously be obsessive inside of you there. Um, and that's why bringing this into balance, doing the shadow work, right? And, and taking what you've learned, this could be very intensive study for a student, right? Presenting as a student archetype, but still not sure what you want to do with this, with this two wands. So with that eight of pentacles, the learner, right? Uh, hovering here, what does that look like? Even though it's hovering, it may not have come down into physical form yet. What does this, what does this look like, the ace of wands? So something that you really want, which would actually turn that two of wands into a three right? That place of loyalty, commitment, at least to this uh, learning here and putting it into form. Now, this could be you issuing the wand, uh, so to speak, almost like the page of wands. Uh, uh, you do have the crone of wands, the knight of wands, Sagittarius there. Definitely a new creation, a new desire, a new element of fire comes in as a result. And it can be that impulse to take action, well, that leads us to the spider woman. We got two weavers in a row there. I wouldn't call it a full-out double whammy. I don't see any double whammies yet. 
but certainly uh, that there are threads here and there are quantum timelines. And like a video game, it's all programmed, but there's a variety of what you want to do, of what level you want to pull back on, what level you want to go ahead on, you know, save your, your hit points or whatever. It's been a while. What does this look like? Please, uh, my gods of air, that wheel of fortune on the inner, and you've got airs, your double whammy, eight of pentacles, right? You are going to put in the work here because it is time, because here you have it on the inner. I mean, really, you couldn't ask for clearer in terms of tarot symbolism, going from the crown of what's coming into being a many immediate future with this desire. Well, it looks like you put it into play from the eight of pentacles to the eight of pentacles because it's time. You can't fuck up the divine plan. You can't fuck up the path that you love. The path that you love can't be fucked up. But we can think it is. And we can think we have. And we can think somebody else has too. All works out. All works out in the end. Don't know. Don't ask me how. They don't tell me that kind of stuff. Oh, please. It's not much of a movie if the protagonist knows how it ends, right? Wouldn't be much of a Nora Ephron, right? If they knew that it all works out in the end, although we walk into those movies kind of knowing <laughs> that they all work out in the end. Otherwise, they get horrible ratings, don't they? So, uh, so let's keep going. Your cross is very interesting. Let's look at the staff. They got that crown of cups, Hecate. And this could be, like, the decision. They're learning how to really um, empower themselves to go through this transformation and Inside of them, I can't take this, the image of Hecate, uh, crone at the crossroads, saying, you must decide, you must choose. This two of wands, very much a crossroad card, saying you got to do this wisely, but you have to feel the feelings here, right? You have to allow those to, to transform. It's just part of the lesson, shadow work, whatever. What does this look like on the outer, please, my gods? Ten of pentacles. Now, this is just like... The Taurus read I think I did last night where they got um, a tricky card on the inner, but they got the Ten of Cups. This is about money, sex, and power. This is about having it all. You are learning how to have it all. Do I think you have it all? No. Do I think you are learning how to have it all? Absolutely. But this emotional component cannot be avoided. Sorry. You got to feel it to heal it. And it remember, it's really not yours. It's stuff that you absorbed right written into this lifetime before you were e before you even drew a breath as the character you play in this world right so this could be family stuff for sure but this is everything you want it feels like you had this or you came close to it but it didn't get there right and i can kind of see why right that indecision that and there is a sacrifice needed here but it is a sacrifice of a point of view a belief that may have appeared true at the time but is not anymore it's going to take great courage to really do this uh, that could be about self-worth i mean really scorpio eighth house energy is mysticism there's a part of it that is always shrouded but that is the divine calling you ever forward to go deeper in and higher up yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, they got that Libra. That's their radiating. It is that mental balance. I feel that's there. And I feel with the learner, it's like they're trying to apply this step by step. There's also something here about the shadow self, right? One-on-one -on -one relationships, the shadow self, marriage, partnerships, even legal partnerships. That Libra energy there, Scotty, what, my gods, does this, how are they appearing from the outside looking at? Well, King of Wands, I would say this is you in the sense of uh, that fire energy, of being very much either a boss or a creative fire energy. Uh, and focused on yourself, being self-actualized. And I think with these two together, oh, by the way, we have Aries and Libra here, zodiacal opposites, but cardinal fire and cardinal air, right? So they're not incompatible, they're just opposites, uh, both in element, but they are, well, in element, but not uh, in condition. The condition is cardinal. So very creative, very putting it out there in the world. And I feel like as you move through that two of wands, that ace of wands comes in, right? Because what's the king holding? The ace of wands. Um, to plow ahead, right? Regardless of whether you have planets in Aries, right? Regardless, if you do, go have a look. 
but that really shows me that that's you saying, no, I, I am the king of my destiny. I get to say what happens to me. I get to choose my choices. And so I got to suck it up and be strong and courageous and see things differently and feel the stuff I don't want to feel. But that's going to bring me into the balance I need within to be in a balanced relationship outside. I don't want to say without because people think that means lack, but it's the opposite of within as well. And your destiny comes from the Six of Blades. Now, this could be therapy. This could be counseling. This could be all sorts of stuff. But I think with that hanged man, now we see it really is seeing things differently, manipulating your mind. I'm willing to see things differently. Right? How willing are you? I will forgive and see this differently. Where we want to see things differently and then forgive. It's like, all right, I will see. I will forgive. I'm willing to forgive. And you are given what you need uh, to see things differently. It's just how it works. Good old Course in Miracles. What's this look like? The Six of Blades. Manipulation on the inner in their destiny. What's this look like on the outside? A double, double whammy strength card. This is totally about you following your heart, being creative, but being balanced. Right? That six of blades, six of blades, six of swords, right? Going from this choppy water within you to smooth sailing. And it's not like, well, because that storm is a common there in your outcome. You have what you need to do this. I mean, you've got the magician behind you. I'm going to say you have the tools to do this. You have the knowledge. Just you have to apply it. And it's going to take a lot of fortitude, the grace of fortitude in the heart chakra. Check out my book, Words of Grace. It's written in chakra chapters and go right to the heart chakra if you want. But when do we ever need the strength guard and courage unless we are challenged with something where the heart is saying yes and perhaps the mind is saying no because the mind is dealing with fear somewhere in the gut. Yeah, 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 yeah. not easy. Simple. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Not easy. I will never say that forgiveness work is easy, but it is incredibly simple from the higher dimensions. And as you reach them, you go, oh, it's just a fucking video game. Okay. <laughs> okay. It was all written in. Couldn't happen any other way. It was all for the development of the soul. And certainly you might want to keep that in mind dealing with that uh, five of cups, the storm coming. And that's hard. Third, third eye crown. This could be stuff that has been those choppy waters finally coming up. I mean, not after this past year and a half, how could you not be upset? But, you know, to me, this is the heartbreak card way more than the Three of Swords ever was or ever will be, right? And heartbreak, loss, um, turbulence, right? But it passes and it leaves the sky clearer. That's why you got to feel it to heal it, right? To, to change the state from water to air and then to spirit. What does this look like on the outside? Please, my gods. The chariot. Oh, you're going to bust a move. But you're going to bust a move in a storm? <laughs> like that, the video didn't didn't freeze. That was me just putting it to you. Uh, if, if you come, if you... I mean, it is the Cancerian card. And moods are like storms. They come and go like weather and bloat. Right? Thank you, Carrie Fisher. <laughs> This is definitely uh, you moving towards somebody. I don't know this is somebody coming towards you. Not somebody in Hermitage. That's the thing. They're sort of meh about this. But I feel like as you heal the emotions inside of you, I mean, unless roles are completely reversed and you're the martyr and they're the student, whatever, um, you're going to act on this. And it does, I would just say, don't drunk text, right? Don't anger text. I've done it. We've all done it. Be careful. Learn from that, right? Um, but, I mean, just showing up on somebody's front door, though, is a little bit different, too. I mean, that might exactly be what you're being told to do, but, you know, laws and whatnot, just be careful. Um, because this does feel like an emotional charging forward. Now, I will say, all right, I don't say this every time the chariot card comes up, but a light horse and a dark horse. The light horse is inspiration. The dark horse is... Um, motivation, love and fear, right? Every morning I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this today. And I've got, I have a client today and I'm going to do the Gemini and the Cancer videos. I'm going to make dinner. Da, 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 da. And then there's the motivation. Okay, I'm not going to get myself out of bed. I'm going to fucking do this. I got to do that, right? So it takes both horses to move forward. This is certainly done in a storm. And it might because if, if how could you not know this person then? 
uh, that you make the decision and you take what you learn and you put it into action and you do the emotional healing work, which granted for air signs is tricky, particularly I would think Gemini moons would have trouble with that, uh, not being able to express how they feel because the Gemini's on the inside, right? Not on the outside. Uh, not that they don't have a lot to say, but that's a lot of air in all that water, which could certainly be a storm. So if you are Gemini moon, I could totally see that there are still your way through this is courage and seeing things differently in your destiny. Okay. We've got 22 cards down. Let's get our last two on the table. The Whispers of Love Oracle, the voices of the higher selves of all involved, not just your higher self, their higher self. And if other people are involved too, let's, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of court cards here but I don't necessarily feel that there's a whole bunch of people involved in this, if so tangentially in either world. But I'm not getting a lot on this martyr here. I'm getting this is mostly about you, particularly with the amount of air that I'm seeing here on the table. Breathe. It's a call upon the higher selves of all involved for the Gemini Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, signs watching this video, receiving this uh, reading, though both of them seem to be finding their courage, seeing things differently in very different ways. Uh, what is the piece of information, inspiration, or insight most needed for the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? I'm watching this video, receiving this reading on the path of true love. Whenever they are uh, watching this, in terms of them being the student in relationship with a martyr or vice versa, Higher selves, the whisper of love is. Honesty is essential work. Uh, to be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. Look, if, you, if you're finding your truth, right, that student in you really getting into, no, my real truth is, is I love you and it's driving me crazy, right? It's, it's overthinking the crap out of it. How do I make this happen? How do I make this work? How do I bring this into alignment? Well, start being honest with yourself emotionally. This is how I feel and this will pass, but I can't push it past. Right? I can't push it down. I can't push it away. The only way out is through. And this is why the mantra, true love conquers all, but true love is who you really are before you came down into this body right, and had all these relationships down here in the highest octaves, there is the grand singularity, the supreme being, the divine one, whatever you want to call source, right? So be really honest with yourself and communicate. I mean, to be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully. I feel like you're going to do that, but just be careful with that storm, right? That if it is a beautiful summer storm, right? Like a, a sun shower, lovely. I don't get that vibe on the Five of Cups, though. I don't even get that vibe on the Four of Cups. <laughs> that is tricky. That is tricky, particularly because it is true. Uh, the Chariot is the card for the sign of Cancer and can be moody, to say the least. I was raised by a Cancerian mother. What, you think I don't know that vibe? Of course I do. Of course I do. Eve, my understudy, of course I knew, breathe. Even given you all about Eve. <laughs> Gemini's, you do this to me. So let's, uh, let's call upon the Ascended Masters of True Love. Please, what is the perfect healing mantra for the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs? Watching this video, receiving this reading on the path of true love as the student dealing with the martyr or vice versa. I will even read it from the bookie book for them and put it all together. So please, what is the perfect healing mantra to help them heal, to help them make their way under grace and in perfect ways on the path of true love? So true love may conquer all, that they may be loved, be loving, and be loved for their well-being and for the well-being of all. Their perfect mantra is unraveling codependency. Work! Work! <laughs> yes, which work? I haven't done that in a while. Unraveling codependency. Only I have to feel good about my choices. If what's holding you back from being with this person is what other people think, only you have to feel good about your choices. That is my barometer. This mantra is my barometer as to whether I am dealing with a codependent contract and I don't care. I don't care. Family member, friend, business, whatever. No. No, 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 no. There will be no people pleasing, right? There will be no empath being drained by narcissists. No, 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 no. Vampires. No, 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 no. 
only I have to feel good about my choices. And if somebody else explodes because of one of your choices, well, wait till you hear this. Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> Unraveling codependency. Only I have to feel good about my choices. <laughs> I have some feelings about this. Uh, when codependency unravels, you are able to move freely in the direction of your heart's desires without needing permission from others. Done. Right? Like, I'm in. Sign me up. Say the mantra 10 billion times a day. As codependency fades, you are able to honor the emotional reactions of others as crucial stages of their healing journey without taking responsibility for them, particularly if you're dealing with a martyr. Now, the psychological language that works is when you did that, I felt. Not you made me feel. That's hemorrhaging your power. Right? That's an argument. <laughs> Do you want an answer or an argument? <laughs> a lot all about Eve coming up for you all. <laughs> you, you want an argument. Uh, yeah, so you might make a choice that might make somebody explode, but that explosion is part of the divine plan. And I feel like it's going to be hard, right? Eight of Pentacles, you're learning how to do this. You don't have to nail the dismount perfectly. And certainly you can't go by other people's emotions, reactions, explosions. And maybe that's the storm. Maybe that's the storm that you kind of bust a move. Only I have to feel good about my choices. And I've had friends say to me, well, doesn't that mean I would like go murder somebody or burn down the village? I go, it wasn't, that wouldn't feel good. That wouldn't feel good. But I do feel like this emotional storm surge inside of you, you bust a move. And maybe you finally say, that's it. I don't care what anybody else thinks about this. I'm going after my hermit martyr <laughs> who's a little meh and is gonna, you. and the courage part is they're feeling meh about this. All right. Uh, let me get the last little bit of this. Um, this mantra is ideal for healing family dynamics <laughs> much. Uh, cultivating emotional freedom. Scorpio in your lesson position and reclaiming a personal power. This is about your freedom. You may have to bust a move away from, towards someone, uh, but certainly you better do it honestly. If you're not, the truth will set you free, but you're learning what that truth is as well. So is this a rush? Is this a hurry? Only you can know that. But certainly these cards on the table are pointing to a rather dramatic external busting of the said move into this world towards this martyr uh, because of that ace of wands and stuff you are learning but that has come out of a place of indecision and criticism and really thinking about this and now having the courage to do this as a result of seeing things completely different sacrificing something that was never real in the first place probably a belief system based uh, totally in illusion which happens. Yeah, yeah. Let me put it together for you. As if I needed to, please take a nice deep breath. My collective pantheons of the divine, thank you uh, for the clarity of this reading for the Gemini Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs watching this video, receiving this reading. Uh, may they uh, learn the humility and devotion to knowledge. May they embrace that with an openness to lifelong learning as they are dealing with somebody who is learning the transcendent nature of service to one self or a cause, really connecting to that mutable Sagittarian expansion inside of them, but maybe stuck at a crossroads. They're not sure what they really want to do in terms of busting a move, dealing with somebody who's probably not communicating, but is probably in higher states of mind and spirit there and feeling a little meh on the outside uh, about this relationship in general. Very dissatisfied or at least not willing to deal or cope with it. Well, at the core, what they may not be aware of is that there is great courage here. There probably is very, very strong love, courageous, leonine, kind of like the sun card, love but strength here but that they both need to surrender and see this differently. And I would think the martyr would be doing that going deeper in and higher up. But will the Gemini student be willing to that lifelong process of what that takes once that sacrifice is made? Well, in the past, they've certainly thought about it. So may those thoughts open their hearts here with the magician them trying to bring this into alignment and into physical form as they will understand they are learning wisdom how to put this into the physical world and that that ace of wands will call them for 
it, that inspiration, that new desire, that shot. The iron is hot. They take the, they take the shot. And certainly it is in divine timing when they eight of pentacles from the inner to the outer here, putting in the work, doing what is necessary to move this forward. All the while dealing with that Scorpio transformation inside of them, feeling it, healing it, moving through it, perhaps some underworld experiences there, but that really presents them with the access to all that they need in the physical world, particularly if this is a happy, healthy, stable relationship, that this is the lessons that they need to do on the inside to manifest that. On the outside, which they've obviously set into play here with that magician in the past, so they are presenting the energy of coming into that cardinal Libra balance within themselves, getting clear about what they want in their relationships and their partnerships in all ways, shapes, and forms, particularly with unraveling codependency, but we'll get there. And presenting as the initiator of their lives, perhaps appearing selfish to other people, but certainly taking the reins of their own lives and being the kings of their own desires, choices, and decisions, while their destiny comes certainly by being Heracles, by a lot of Leo energy here in this, uh, certainly taking the Nemean lion by the neck, right? Taking the courage, facing their fears, and doing the mental work, however that plays itself out for them. You know, affirmations, chants, mantras, therapy, prayer, what have you, uh, bringing them to, to and through the storm, their own inside, but nonetheless, that clears the skies for them to move forward as that chariot and to really move an entire phase of their life now into the fray because honesty is essential. That is the key. They have to come clean. They have to come correct uh, to be a loving person. It is important that they speak truthfully and in a loving manner. And so may they be blessed with all that they need to unravel codependency because only they have to feel good about their choices so they can heal, so they can learn, so that they can be loved, be loving, and be the love that they truly are in the highest octaves here on earth, bringing heaven to earth, bringing true love to a planet desperately in need for their well-being and for the well-being of all. May true love conquer all for the well-being of all and with harm to none as we will it. So let it be done. So motivate. So it is. <laughs> Yeah, I think I kind of got some of that King of Wands vibey coming through me here. I mean, wow, it's a very, very clear read. And if you want a private read on this, just mention the reading. I think I won't be forgetting this one. You know, the Gemini one, Unraveling Codependency with the Student and the Martyr. I don't think I'll be forgetting that. And there's a link in the description box of the video teaching you, showing you uh, what happens with me in a reading and how to do it and all of that. And... Ooh, I have a client in less than an hour. Yeah, no, I've got time. I've got a little more than half an hour to reboot and, and go deal with my lovely Cancerian client uh, today. So if you want to book me, book me. You liked it, like it. You want more, subscribe. And certainly wishing you all the very best and the very, very blessed as you prepare to bust a move. My beloved gem, stay outrageous. Stay truly outrageous. Stay truly, truly, truly outrageous. Hell, farewell and blessed, blessed be.